What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Erica, from the Classy Climb blog. Uh, your girl's a little sick. We a little achy, a little fevery. We had to run out and run some errands and grab some items and get back to the house. And we've been listening to audiobooks all day. So we're going to share how do we reinvent our lives and uh, reinvent our lives in four months. Now, again, we don't mean a total overhaul transformation. It's possible, but not always possible the way you think. Um, and I talked about it because yesterday I was saying how I'm purging like one third of all my clothes and all these things because they're associated with an identity that I'm not associated with anymore per se. Even though we can look back on fondly on clothes and things, we have to be able to let them go. And that's where you see a lot of people don't want to learn and unlearn new things and they stay stuck at stuck and bad patterns. Uh, another thing on that is, and I'm going to address it very quickly. A lot of times we see a lot of commentary in uh, our channel, multiple people's channels all over YouTube, a lot of hateration. You know, as Mary J. Blige says, no hateration in this holleration or whatever that song is. And what I want you to understand is the more we support or joyously big up people who are haters, they're not constructive. They're not building anything. They're not contributing to our society. They're just demo people that tear down. The worse it is for our community and for our society. The best thing I can encourage every single person on this platform is if you don't like something or someone or even my commentary is to go build up your platform. Go build up the people you speak to. Go speak into the lives. Here's why. When you come from a me, 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 I'm qualified, I know all these things perspective, that's anxiety driven and it's validation seeking driven. Right. We, we see it all the time. Churches and places. Well, I'm a I'm an old pastor or I'm 50 something years old and I know more than you because I've lived longer. And nine times out of 10, it's these people don't have the life or the results that you desire. So you're not going to listen to them. Instead of looking at it from perspective of what I can offer you, what I can offer this job, what I can offer the community, what I can offer instead of just critiquing and criticism and accountability is something positive. Now, the other day, I, I don't you know, getting to the beach. But the other day, uh, even Tony, the closer said, listen, if you weren't at InvestFest and you were trashing it, that's pretty corny because you weren't even there to see it, much less uh, visualize what the ideal was or what the circumstances were in the marketing or any of the stuff. And and so we have this society, it's fortunately, especially in the black community, where we will circle the wagons and shoot each other. If you ever seen the old West movies, you circle the wagons and you face out, right? We shoot the enemy. Right. But we don't do that in our community. We circle the wagons and critique and pick over what we think other people should be doing, how they could be doing it, what they could be doing better and how I'm smarter. And honestly, it reeks of me, 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 anxiety ridden. Um, I don't have much value in America. So I'm going to come and attack another person because I don't have much value instead of offering value to people and people saying, dang, he offers so much value or she offers so much value. I'm going to rock with them. Right. So I'm going to get on my little high horse, but I had to do that intro. I had to really talk to y'all. A lot of times when we're out here comparing, comparison is the thief of joy. All right? It just is. Um, it, it just is. Okay? So long and the story short, uh, we have to make cognitive shifts. Now, what do I mean when you're reinventing your life in four years? You don't have to be super drastic. You don't have to go on burnout mode. You don't have to work yourself to death. There are several books I'll be posting in the community walls, walls in the Facebook groups about this. Uh, but long and the story short, there's four kind of structures. It's discipline. And again, this is from a uh, great video I posted in the community wall. He does a better job explaining this in depth. But the author who wrote Deep Work, uh, Be So Great They Can't Ignore You. He has another book coming out called Slow Productivity. And the four keys, of course, are discipline, values, control, vision. I wrote it on a piece of paper. I'm not feeling great, but I'm going to knock this one out as quickly as possible. Um, and nine times out of ten, when we want to start a new life, a new habit, uh, we fall because our will, our willpower is only so strong, right? We have to start controlling our environment and our habits. This is why people go take everything out of the refrigerator. I'm going to start a new diet today. I'm going to do this and do that. And, and then two weeks later, they're back with a bunch of crap in their house and refrigerators because they never really structured or, you know, got themselves to a point where this is normal. I have meals in mind. I have food in place. I have things I want to cook. This happens often to people, right? Um, even with workouts. Everybody jumps up and sign out to do workouts in January. Well, I love his video because he was talking about you really can do these four months in the fall, September, October, November, December. And I love that because 
I think a lot of Americans in our culture think the fall means do nothing. It's the way I addressed it the other day about financial literacy and financial freedom. A lot of people think financial freedom means I do nothing all day. And I've never seen really productive or successful or even people with well-raised children do nothing all day. I've never seen that. I've never, just, it doesn't work. It's, a, it's an ideal and it doesn't work. Um, I'm posting a couple of videos about how Europe is going through some hard times and really frozen weather and cold houses coming up because all these ideals we've been taught that Europe is so great because they get to lay around and do nothing really comes from high unemployment and bad policies and systems. And so I posted some of those videos, but this is more of a reinventing your personal life in four months. And what does that look like and how do you get it structured? So we're going to go step by step. And I'm just going to say for my personal life, I literally went in and threw out one third of my clothes because I was like, that's no longer my identity. Right. When I was talking about wardrobes and what I want to do and while I'm challenging myself in this new work environment is because my business is automated. Like I've completely automated it to just about nothing. The only thing that requires my hands on work is these videos. I have a thumbnail guy, I have a, a email guy, I have an email, like all these things are automated to the point that maybe I may have to come in and course correct it or come in and fix a thing or two. But nine times out of 10, I'm laying around doing a lot of nothing during the day. Hence, that's why the new construction activities projects came in. But even those have GCs and managers, right? Even my properties in Troy have now course corrected themselves. The ones we have left and the ones left in Cleveland have course corrected themselves. People are paying, the manager's working. It's like, great. Right. So now we just close out. And what happens is uh, most people would fill that space with watching Netflix and and Hallmark Channel to their nosebleeds. Right. Uh, or if they have kids, they fill themselves with busy work to the kids. Right. I don't have kids right now. And so uh, I had a conversation with somebody about, you know, traveling the world and yada, yada. And and um, I talked about how Anthony and said he wanted to have a six month honeymoon, which is, is beautiful and ideal. Uh, but at some point in that six months, you guys are going to find something you need to do productive with your time. Just being honest. It's only so many hours a day. You know what I mean? Um, and so here we go. Uh, let's kick it off with uh, discipline is the first part. Right. So, again, anybody want to write this down in the comments? It'd be appreciated. Discipline, values, control and vision. And they don't all have to happen all at one time, but they happen overlappingly in this right and so vision should really be number one right because it's like how what's the vision of your life what's the outlook what are you trying to accomplish what is the five-year goal but really we're just starting out the four months because then we can make adjustments and so but vision isn't always the start right thank you sparkle Sims. i appreciate that uh it's discipline it's creating the environment for us to even grow right so here's the thing habit schedule and commitment right? How do we get those? You know, three keystone habits. That's it. Three. Now, what are the three? What are the three? You need something for your body. You need something for your profession and you need something for your personal. So many times people have all these goals. I have 27 different goals. No, 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 no. Let's give me three, right? Because after three hard ideals or really focused attention a day, you're burned out a little bit, right? So body, you know, making the commitment, hey, Erica, we're going to walk every day for an hour, even if we don't feel well. You know, I have a, a bicycle inside my house. We're going to ride the bike for 30 minutes, even if we don't feel great or we don't going to make our way outside to go walk. And if we're going to walk, we're going to progressively walk on a treadmill. We're going to up climb, do all these different things. We're going to lift weights. We're going to commit mm -hmm. one hour. Just one. OK, I hope that that noise stopped. OK, and so that's our body. Right. And, and, and in, in that body conversation, we're going to have these type of foods in our house to make these type of meals to get more holistic. Right. Uh, we're going to buy more chicken and different things and wild caught fish and chicken for the farmer's market. So we can do what? Have those meals already in the house. So it's not like, oh, well, I just I had to go run out and buy something. No, I made a chicken. I did this. It was already there. It's already there. Now, for you, maybe factor meals or somebody delivering some type of meals to your house, you can just pop in the microwave. But I'm a big believer now into this going straight to the baking mode, the slow cooking mode, the crock pot cooking, because it's not just me anymore. It's another person. And so that way we're both eating healthy. We're both taking care of our bodies. And that's, you know, that's the body component, right? Now, um, personal, personal. 
so many times people think we just need to fill up everything with uh, work, 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 but we need something personal. I like to read uh, and I like to listen to, to podcasts or I like, not podcasts, but books, books on demand or you have it on Audible. And so even when I've been sick the past day or two, I've been laying in bed, just hit the audio book and let it read to me for five hours. Now, I don't make it. Sometimes I've been passing out, going to sleep, waking up, the book over. I had to go back and do it again. But it's one of those things that I'm, it's a personal thing. I personally enjoy it. All the books I have aren't nonfiction, serious biography books. Some of them are just enjoyable reading, right? Um, sometimes I have a, a, a TV show or something personal, right? Uh, some of the things that are on my desires or list is finishing up my flight school, finishing up more tennis, more golf. And so you'll see some of that incorporated because it's not like, hey, every day I'm going to be golfing hours a day. No, it's just like 130 minutes a week. We'll do this. We'll just add it in slowly and take a lot of other stuff out of its place. Right. And so that's per that's personal. Professionally, professionally, me and several people I talk to feel like we need to grow. Right. As, as your company hits new levels, um, as you hit new benchmarks, like I feel like my company's been capped at a certain mark, not because of YouTube, but because of our systems behind the scenes and in place, how they run, how they interact with people. And so we implemented a new thing with breaking into tech. Facebook group grew it to four thousand in, 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 in a month. And we're interacting with over four thousand new clients. And we teach in the staff, this is what we need done, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all right? And so you have to be able to say, professionally, I want to do this. You know, professionally, I challenge myself to work within a tech company in cybersecurity in the sales department. And how does that look? And it's remote. So how do I challenge myself to maybe once or twice a month go into the office, right? Have a new wardrobe, right? To have this life. Again, discipline. The food, the walking every day. Right. A little bit more than the walking because I still work with a personal trainer twice a week. But it's changing what's in that discipline box. What are these keystone habits? What are these things you got to do? You got to do. OK, so this is this is me tossing through one third of clothes. You don't have to do what I do. Uh, there's a video I posted on Instagram where the woman does the Steve Harvey challenge and she's in a khaki suit, a tan suit, a, a khaki suit, a blue suit, a navy, a blue, a black and a something. Right. And the two cream shirts and the two baby blue shirts. And, and she did the whole challenge and it looked amazing on her. But so many times you're watching Pinterest. I need more and more and more clothes and stuff. And you really don't. I'm a minimalist at heart. So like gutting my house is an annual thing for me. Because I feel like I'd be collecting stuff. I'm like, this is too much stuff. We ain't even using all this stuff. Let's gut it. And I'm just tossing. I'm tossing things because I used to know hoarders. <laughs> we have older family members who used to be hoarders. And I would watch them and I would be like, I'd be anxiety ridden going to visit their house. So I'm big on just getting that stuff out of here. Okay. Getting that stuff out of there. Now, that's the that's the discipline, right? We got the we got the new clothes. We got the workout, <laughs> right? We got the new food. We got a little personal hobbies there. We're kind of adjusting, right? Right? For you, it may be something completely different. For you, it may be starting that business you always dream of, that blog, that YouTube channel. And I'm gonna uh, uh, encourage you to do the same. Small incremental, small incremental, right? But but consistent, because that's the fact. We need it to be consistent. Values. How do I reconnect with my values? What are my values? What's important to my life? You should have a personal code. And when I enforce strongly my personal code this past year and some change, um, because of my relationship and because just my life was changing and I'm getting older, people got away from me. Quickly. Why? Because they saw my discipline changed. I'm getting up every day. We're working out together with my spouse. I'm, I'm eating differently. I'm not going to the same restaurants I used to go to. I'm wearing different clothes. Um, and that intent that is intensifying as this fall goes. Uh, I'm not talking about the same things. I'm not doing the same things. I'm not caring about the same topics. And so why? That stemmed from a personal code. That stemmed from a personal what are the, again, and, and, and to get there, and this is again, how do you approach life in good or bad times? This is the best part. If you if you don't really get nothing else from this, just write down on values, right? Because a lot of times people say values are things you don't like. If you don't like people lying to you, you don't like people not keeping their word, you know, I don't like liars. That's my value, right? People get real r r righteous and it's, it's not like what they, <laughs> it's not real. My best tip is to say, how do I approach life in good or bad times? 
How do I approach life? Like if something bad happens to me, do I fall apart? Do I fall off the wagon? Do I start binge eating? Do I start drinking? Do I start doing drugs? Like people literally who have no code, that's what happens. I've seen, and, and I don't want to, and this is this is harsh because everybody deals with grief differently. Um, I've had two sets of friends that, um, one, the parents died young. Another one, parents died young. One was super disciplined and went into super disciplined mode. Just like, hey, my parents died, but they instilled me to do this. So they kept on that track. The other ones kind of just fell off the wagon. Just kind of just fell apart. Right? Um, and it's one of those things where it was it, not their core value. It was their parents' value. It wasn't their value. Right? It was their parents' value to do a certain thing. And when they when their parent wasn't there, they just didn't know what to do. This happens often when people get out of the military, when people leave certain careers. They just like fall off the wagon because it was never their internal value. It was forced on them. Right? So again, think about values as how do you approach life in good or bad times? And someone said, I'm frozen. Can you guys hear me and see me? Put a one in the comments if you can hear me and see me. That would be great to know that it is working. It may be your internet. It may not be mine because I'm connected to a coffee shop's internet. Put a one in the comments if you can hear me and see me and I'll give it a second to make sure it's working before I continue. And I may speak on this again, this topic again, because it's, it's such an important topic. Um, and you see the, the, the thumbnail just is for sillies. Like, you ain't a pimp, you a fairy, right? Because how do you approach life when times are good or bad? And many people aren't doing that well, right? Unfortunately. I mean, we saw that basically during the pandemic, right? <laughs> people fell apart. People jumped up and got married. People had a bunch of pandemic babies. And it wasn't even a part of their values. <laughs> they just were... Doing whatever because the pandemic, right? That's the best professional, clean way I can say that today. Cal Newport, thank you. Listen, be using my use my Amazon links, okay? <laughs> okay, so listen, that was our dis discipline. That was our values. Now our control, because you think discipline is control? No, 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 no. Discipline, discipline, control is different. What is control? It is a space to think and have gratitude. Okay? And 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 this is this is where this is where when we start pulling these things out that aren't a part of our vision, that aren't a part of our values, we're reconnecting to our values. When we're really getting our three keystone habits a day, time all of a sudden opens up. Because see the dangerous thing that's happening to us. Hold on a second because the phone rang. Hold on. I hate it. I hate it. I'm sorry. What happens to us in life is we we just we just cram everything we can or we start getting on these cell phones and we just aimlessly let the digital internet take us wherever. This is how people get in porn addictions. This is how people get in shopping addictions. This is how people get into these rabbit holes of I'm going to go build a bunker in the middle of the side of a mountain because it, something's about to happen. And so... <laughs> You know, that's how people get in these really deep cults. You know what I mean? And so you have to have some control there over you. So you create space and time to do what? Reflect and have gratitude. The other day I was talking to somebody and I had I had a friend look over, you know, she was at this office and she looked at my resume. She's like, girl, you've done so many things and you've been so successful. This resume doesn't even say all the things you've done and been. And I was laughing and I was like, thank you. Because you have to sometimes sit back and go, yeah, I did that. I ran a, a, a film festival. I ran a conferences. I've done boat parties. I've done events all over the United States. I'm an international speaker that was paid. I had international events. I took people to Panama. I just didn't take them to Africa. But literally, I've done so many things that I can look back and as, if, as my children will grow in the future, I can be like, you know, your mama did this, 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 this. Your mama lived a whole life, right? Because there's a lot of people who celebrate endless travel. Right. And that's OK. That's a good thing, too. Right. And, and I would actually eat before I have this little baby. I want to go travel a bunch more. Right. Because I know the change of now you're a parent. You're really just a parent wherever you go into the next donation with a baby. Um, you're traveling, but you're traveling with a baby. OK. <laughs> and so that control is like, I'm not going to fill my time with a bunch of endless Instagram and TikTok. I'm not going to fill the endless fall time with a bunch of nothing and just watching Hallmark to my nose 
drools or something. My mouth is drooling, right? I'm going to be pur purposeful in that time. And I'm going to change my life. There's somebody uh, that one of our classic comp students, I'm not going to say his name, but I've been watching his Instagram and I'm so very proud of him. Uh, it's probably two guys at this point where I've been seeing their Instagram here and there. And they are literally working consistently, biking, working out, lifting. And I said, congrats. You know, I see what you're doing. I see you. And he's like, I want to be unrecognizable next year. And I thought, oh, how beautiful that is. Because there are seasons where people will come by and see you and be like, oh, my God, is that you? Is that you? I haven't seen you in forever. Look at you. You're a whole different person. And that's a real thing. That's a real thing. That happens quite often to people. Way more than y'all think. Okay? And so, okay, that's we've, we've done discipline. We've done values. We've done control. Now, part of control, too, is work. Right? We have quarterly plans. Right? We have semester plans, right, for college students. We have uh, daily plans, right? We have to hour block our time. And that's really where we get our control is hour blocking our time. Because the most stressful time for most of my friends is bath time. Because now they have to do this repetitive task they clearly do not like. The kids need to be washed, correct? Can I keep one around right? this, this phone going to ring all day and night. It's crazy. And so you have to have this. And people say, oh, Erica, I don't have time to sit down on a plan an hour block. You really do. And this is a this is the issue with the control. This is the issue with the vision. So if you envision yourself five years from now, your vision of yourself should be booked and busy and falling all over the place and unchaotic. No, no, no. The vision for your life should be, okay, this is the da-da-da. Like I have an event planner book. And and my significant other was like, well, that's just an event planner. You didn't even put, you didn't show me your other plans. I'm like, those other plans are in a whole nother notebook. You know, if you want to see that notebook, I got it, right? And so you have to say, hey, these are these plans I have. These are the days set out for it. You know, Bible studies on Monday, uh, workouts with the trainers are Tuesday, Thursday. And now I have this space, right, where it's just like it's, it's rolling uphill the number of times we've gotten the massage, the number of times we've done a lot of things. Like, I've already budgeted for the rest of the year, and it's very little. Like I have certain flights to go home to North Carolina on the beach. I have certain flights to go um, to a few different conferences. Uh, I have I have like an X amount of these massages already planned. Like the rest of my fall is already planned out. Anything that I would add to this point would be a surprise, would be spontaneity, right? And that's where someone asked me to talk on patience. Patience come in. But you have to have goals that are what? Trackable. How can you have a vision if there's no way to track it? Like, well, I just have this vision of my life. and It has to be trackable. There has to be metrics that are met that make it trackable. Does that make sense, everybody? Put a one in the comments if that's making sense to you, if I haven't lost you. But it's a cognitive shift. You know, you'll be at work and, and you're working, right? And somebody tap you on the shoulder. Now you done turned your mind and body from what you were doing and you're talking to them. And now you done lost 20, 30 minutes because you, to get back into the mode of working and being focused, that person done threw you off. And that happens every day in life. This is why we don't deal with distractions or distracted people. That's why when I'm doing these videos and someone comes in the comment section and says something outrageous or to the left, I delete it. I block them. Oh, I have a question right now. That's a me, 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 anxiety driven response. If I see your comment and it's like me, 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 I need something right now, Erica. No super chat, no consideration of others, no consideration of the host. I literally block it. I go, hey, you can come back on Tech Tuesday when we have guests to come on and speak about that. If not, your concern is not a concern for everybody else. That's a selfish driven concern. If I go in my comments after these videos render and someone's, oh, I'm bashing her because, yeah, you know, it's semantics. Really, I want that person to take a minute to realize what do you have to offer people? Are you being truly a craftsman of your life? Are you building out a platform where you're speaking positively that draws people in? Or are you building an audience of haters? Are you building this audience of people who really would turn on you in a heartbeat because they have no focus or discipline to their own life? And to be very clear about that. Now, I will say this part of this reset. If you watch this channel, I reset every couple of months anyway. It's a personal thing. We get closer and closer to the goal. 
of who we see ourselves as, right? When I look in the mirror, who 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 do I think I am? Who do I think I should be? Who does Erica Williams look like at this age and all that other stuff? And you all should be doing that for yourself. And I was walking from eating lunch with Diamond Dave and I looked over in the mirror, the glass of the door, I said, oh, is this me? Oh, Lord, big old booty. We got to keep on working, right? Like we, you, you have moments where you go, let's align this. Let's align the body. Let's align the heart. Let's align the clothes to where we think we should look or how we should dress. Right. It, 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 it isn't when people say, oh, it takes money to make money. It takes all this money. And really, it doesn't. When you start writing it down, it doesn't take all this money. It takes this mindset up here. And so reinventing your life. Can, can you reinvent your life in four months? Uh, yes, you can. You're creating habits and changing who you are as a person so that January 1st, you're not one of these people who run around. Oh, new year, new me. I got a new gym membership. I did all this other stuff. Right now, there are gyms begging people to come in. There are boxing locations begging people to come in. There are trainers begging people to work with them because it's the fall. And everybody cuts out. Everybody goes, oh, the fall. I'm going to stuff myself with pumpkin lattes and food and Thanksgiving and December. And I'm just going to veg out. And so you'll wake up. Right? You'll wake up. And you'll look up five years from now, you've been doing the same thing every year for the past five years. This is why when you see people like me and they're like, man, you're always traveling. You're always uh, you're always in conferences. You're always. I was like, because the body the desires stimulation, dopamine, change. Some of y'all hop in bed to bed with new partners. And that's not what your body needs. That's not what your mind asks for. Your mind asks for internal change. Right. This is why they'll sell studies of people who get gastric bypass surgery, right? They cheated. They got there quick. Ha, I got them. I, I'm losing 100 pounds in three months and da, 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 da. And what ends up happening is that person, they have the highest rates, the highest rates of suicide, drug addiction, and alcoholism because it was never the food. It was something up here and internal. The food was just the mechanism, Right. They'll show you women who have breast, and, and this is not, if you're a woman who's suffered cancer or you've had some kind of disfigurement, I'm not talking about you. But on average, when they study the women who have breast implants, and they're going to do some study in the future on those BBL. It hasn't happened yet, but they're going to do one. Just give them time. The breast, the people who got the breast augmentations in the early, late 80s, 90s, and 2000s, those people had the highest rates of suicide. Because it wasn't about the body. It wasn't about the boobs and the nose jobs. It was something internal. So when we talk about discipline, values, and control, a lot of times you have people who are going to gym daily. I mean, there was one guy said he went to the gym every day because if not, he would have unlived himself because he had got a divorce. And so some things people are using as coping mechanisms, and we don't know. We don't know what that person's going through. If you're watching this channel, I'm always going to recommend you go to therapy. I went to therapy. It was life-changing. It was like, oh, that's why I'm doing that. Oh, that's why that happened. Oh, that's why that went wrong. Oh, okay. Totally got it. This is what happened, right? It's very important. It's very important to do internal dialogue, internal intake, and where are you at right now, right? How do you approach life when it's good or bad? Right? Right? So cognitive shift here. And so when we talk about the number one thing I notice when someone's life is completely out of order and chaotic and crazy, I'll say, hey, man, you know, we're going to do this thing in, in January or we're going to do this in March or April. And you're like, oh, I don't even know where I'm going to be. I don't even know where my life is going to be. I don't know what happens. Right. And so the other day I, I, I quoted a quote and I will quote it again, because if someone's looking to be disagreeable, it doesn't matter what quote I put on here. They're looking to be disagreeable. Um. <laughs> And that's that's that that's on Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> that's on Mary had a little lamb. But um, money loves speed. There's a book called Speed of Trust. Don't take my word for it. Go actually read a book written by an author called Speed of Trust. Wealth loves time. Uh, poverty loves indecision. And so again, if you go throughout life not making a clear decision, right? And here's the thing that really catches people up in a bad way. Oh, I made a decision, but it was the wrong decision. How do you know? See, that's that game people play. And this is a, a great one why you should go watch the original guy's uh, commentary on this. A lot of people get to college. They're in there. They're so excited. It's their passion to be a teacher. And the classes start getting hard. So now they want to switch majors. Well, no matter what major you switch to, it will get hard because you're getting the entry level classes that are usually fun and easy to do. 
at some point, everything requires a little more push. It would be better for you to finish your degree on time, go into the career, give it your all for a couple different jobs for two to three years and go, you know what? Maybe this isn't the career I like. Maybe I could do something different. And the way society has switched, you can do a lot of certificates and switch careers like that. Simple as that, right? Um, this idea that you're stuck, you're not a tree, you can switch. And so a lot of times people are hopping from relationship to relationship, from passion project to passion project. Oh, but that didn't work. That didn't work. That didn't work. And it's a very anxiety driven and chaotic, right? It's very poverty ridden. Why? Because it's full of indecision. That's the quote. That's why it works. Okay. Next quote, wealth loves time. See, it takes time to build wealth. See, so many people want this knee jerk life-changing and one-year reaction. And what ends up happening is uh, if you go, if you make, if you make 30,000 one year, you make 180 the next year, trust me, the IRS is going to audit you. I, I am telling you from experience, the IRS will be like, what, what's going on? Because the, the natural order of things is people don't change and they don't grow. And if they grow, they grow a little bit. That's why they do so many studies that show if you, the average person make 35,000, if they could just double their income, they'd be so happy. And their, their happiness didn't really change after 75,000. And the reason, and this is my internal opinion of that research. The reason their happiness level didn't change after 75,000 is they didn't have a really killer goal. If you really don't want to do much in life, you just want to go home, eat food with your kids and, and, and sit in the backyard and, and, and fart and look at a, a fire pit. 75,000 is plenty. It's plenty. This is why people are so upset. They're like, why am I working so hard? I just want to come home and sit down and do nothing. This is why there is such a joy in these people like doing nothing. They just want to do nothing. Like that's a goal. It's an expert just to do nothing. And they literally rejoice in the ideal of just doing nothing. And that's not normal and that's not natural. So anyway, because even slugs do something, right? You know, even the sloth monkey moves somewhere, even if he's moving slow. And so we talk about money, love, sleeve, speed. It's simply, there was a training that this guy was telling me he was going to attend. It was $250. And I was like, well, you know what? If nothing else, we'll be certified. I looked up. He did a re, uh, he did a call maybe like 90 days after he did that training. He's like, Erica, do you know I made $100,000? And I was like, please do a testimonial for my channel, please. He's like, I, I don't want to because it's just new and I'm making all this money and my wife's so happy. And I was like, you know what that is? That comes from you deciding I'm going to take three days off work to go to this training and lock in. And now I'm making money just by following consistent patterns of like doop, 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 doop every day. Just following consistent patterns. And that's the power of service businesses too, but that's a whole nother conversation. But when we talk about reinventing our lives, in order to reinvent your life, usually people have to come to two, two, two places in life. They're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Uh, they, they just can't see themselves or if they get a mirror or they look in the mirror like, oh, that's how I'm living. They, they, they didn't realize that's how they lived, right? So they get one of those moments, uh, what they call them, Negro wake-up calls or something like that. They get one of those moments like, what? And so I encourage you, for those of you who are saying, Erica, I want to do new, I want to reinvent my life, and people always say this January to April, but the real people that's really serious about it, they're doing it in the fall. They're doing it in August, September, October, November. They're the mom or dad who like, I don't ever want to have another summer like I just had. I don't want my life to continue in that direction. And the problem is a lot of times, even in the comment section where people are like, Erica, do you think 50 or 60 is too old to start over? Do you think 50 or 60 is too old to get in tech? And I really go, <laughs> I really go, do you envision yourself having a different life? And if the answer is no, continue doing what you're doing. Simple as that. If you don't want to have a different life, you can't see it. You can't envision it. You, you can't wrap your head around it. Don't do it. But there's so many people that were like, I'm going to be a nurse. And it took them years to be a nurse. And they're still a nurse. Now they're a nurse. Right. It took them years to become a doctor. And they're going to be a doctor. And somewhere in there is a vision of what you're going to see your life as. This fall, this fall, I'm going to be uh, going out of the country some, and I'll be also attending several banquets and galas and golf charity events. And that person that I'm moving towards requires different clothes, different behaviors, and a different life. Now, these are all things I had already in my mind envisioned years ago. 
and said, oh, I'll slowly get there. I'm not worried about it. But now I'm here. Now, I don't want to burn out. I don't want to, oh, my God, 180 degrees change. I want to gradually install the life that I am envisioning. And now it's here. Right. So many people say, when I get my husband, when I get my wife, when I get my kids, but they've made no tracks, no inlays, no changes to this ideal. It's just an ideal until they really go, hey, here it is. Here's my kids. Right. This is why so many people will have a baby and be like, I don't know how I got pregnant. Oopsie. Because they really weren't awake, one and two, they really weren't trying to envision it. Because if they envision how much a kid costs, how much they need to be prepared, what's my budget set aside. It's not this like, oops, it's a surprise. Oh my God, I gotta go back to work. Oh, I have to make more money all of a sudden because I have a baby. It would be a, oh, I knew that was the cost of that. And now I'm just co- I'm just cognitively letting myself, okay, yeah, that's the cost of that. Same thing. Every year when I hear parents complain about the cost of school supplies and, and putting clothes on children and, and cutting their hair. And I go, did you think it would be free? Did you think this journey would not challenge you? financially or personally did you think raising kids is easy whenever i hear a woman say raising boys is easier than raising girls i'm very concerned for that boy and, and i'm being honest because i i come from i have brothers i have nephews and i have 20 boy cousins and so whenever i hear a woman a woman anywhere on the internet say raising boys is so much easier ask a man that that has raised a daughter or a son you know in general he's like, oh yeah you know boys are kind of easier but then there's not because you're you're struggling and tussling from 12 to 6, 12 to 18 with a person who's, I'm a man. And these hormones are telling me I'm a man. And my energy is now going to push against you. And it's going to be a battle struggle until I'm 18. Of, of who's in control. Who's in control. Who's making decisions. My little attitudes. My little moments. And people say, oh, no, not my son. My son's a sweet angel. Don't ever look in his phone. And don't ever read his emails. Because you're going to find a whole other person there. Okay, this is a they tell this to all parents. Don't go over there because you're gonna find something you didn't believe. Your little sweet angel, your sweet angel. Okay, again, so people say, and again, if you think boys aren't moody, please go ask a family that raises a bunch of boys. They'll let you know boys are quite moody. So you're having the same struggles. And uh, my one friend says, "Well, raising a girl is like raising three boys." <laughs> so I laugh at him because he's funny, but he has four daughters. So God bless him. Okay, he has one son and four daughters. God bless him. And because uh, that's a lot of personalities in the house. And so when I hear stuff like that, I realize that person really never made the cognitive decision that this will be a challenge. This child is a whole different person for me and they will be a challenge. Their life will have different challenges. I will have to invest money and time and resources for the next 30 years of my life, probably to grow this person to be self-sustainable. Right. They're trying to convince you that, oh, man, I had this kid. I don't really, I can't believe every year they need school supplies. Every year they need haircuts. Every year they need food. Oh, my God. So they're telling you already their expectations were not there for children, right? So so, so this video is for thinkers. This video is for people who want to reinvent their life. This is people who want to spend the next four months really writing out who they think they are. Because that's the hardest thing in the world to do is think. Abraham Lincoln talks uh, it's a quote, great quote on that. To really say, okay, is this truly who I am? If I'm not this person, what happens, right? The world doesn't end because you're not that person. But a lot of times, uh, Jim Carrey and some people were talking about depression. Is like you're putting on a, a charade of who you are. And I feel people sometimes get depressed because they know they could be better. And life choices, their choices have shown them, oh, man, I really messed that up. Right. You ever hear people talk about their lost love somewhere? Oh, I messed that up because I thought something was better. Oh, I left this woman because I thought this other woman would be better. Oh, I left my husband because I thought this would be this other life would be better. When all life has a challenge, all people have a challenge. You're going to have to work with that person to enjoy life. Uh, so I'm going to read your comments. I'm going to get out of here because my uh, I need some more medicine. I'm going to lay down. I can't stand that new year, new me. That's the thing, man. Uh, it takes prayer, listening, acting above all. Yeah, it, it, it is a literally the habits, the values, the control, the, just the gratitude. Like, I'm grateful for this life. Other day I was laying down sick. I was like, I'm so grateful. I ain't got to jump up and go to work nowhere right now and be coughing on people. I'm so grateful. 
this video title, I clicked so fast, that was Texas. I've been networking with builders and builders. Their goal is to be a builder by next year. And Alan, you'll get there, right? I always tell people, I'm like, if you're staying looking at land, let's say you're on Zillow every day and for an hour every day, somewhere in that, with the combination of meeting with people, you're going to be there. Like, before you know it, you'll look up, hey, I got an opportunity, man. Well, here you go. We want to buy this here, boom. And it'll come to you. And, and you don't even have to fight to the nail for it. You literally can just consistently be going. Right now, I have four or five people who've been emailing me, hey, I got this property. Would you like it? Da, da, da. How can I you know, work this deal with you? And I was like, man, I spent the past five years, you know, hoping to get to a point where people are just sending me stuff. And I'm here now. So, you know, it, it takes a minute. Because they see a mountain in front of them instead of an elephant. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do you put a giraffe in the refrigerator? Open the door and put them in there. <laughs> you know, you just got to really like keep it easy. I need to hear this today. The distractions are strong when I'm not on point. Time for me to focus. Yeah, you know, you guys, again, you know, people used to make fun of people with the egg timers and the TikTok noise when you play piano. But it is, is a, it is a, that ticking noise when you play the piano. I forgot the name of it. It's a counter. It basically lets you lock in. It makes your mind go into drone mode and you just focus on the piano, right? You stay in tune with the piano. Um, I strongly encourage y'all to do egg timers. When I cook, I put on timers and my mom used to make fun of like, why do you keep putting these timers on? I said, baby, because I got ADHD and my mind will go into a maze and then the house and the chicken be burned up. Like, I can't do that. So I'm a big believer in timers, egg timers, um, time blocking y'all time. You know, I'm just a big believer in that. I believe that really could save a lot of people's lives. Um, a lot of times kids, you know, you, you meet homeschool kids, they're done in like three hours. And then they spend the rest of the day like exploring. And what happens is we're teaching people, kids in public school to kind of draw a day out. Just fill the eight hours with something, right? And that's dangerous. It's dangerous. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Implants make people sick. Also, autoimmune disorders, depression. Yes, this I've heard. Always so good to talk out loud to a trusted professional. No gossip. Very true. I wish more people would talk to. I remember they made the Whisper app and the, the app creator actually started getting super concerned because the Whisper app was like you tell your ideals or whatever you're going through to the app. And they thought, well, this would be cool. We'll see all these cool things people are going to say to the app. Overwhelmingly, it was a lot of men saying very depressing, like, I want to unalive myself. I'm so lonely. And they literally, because the app, <laughs> they were just so overwhelmed. The staff was like depressed. They literally partnered with Better Health because they were like, I'm actually, we're actually scared for everybody using this app. They're saying the most scary things. We really want these people to really get mental health. Uh, and so that's why Whisper app partnered with Better Health because it was like, we're terrified of what we just heard. This is very bad out here. There you go. When I was let go from my last gig, it was imperative. I stayed in the gym daily. It's a stimulant, not really a coping mechanism. For sure. Okay. Uh, cybernetics. Yep. The surgeon and author was shocked that post-plant sur plastic surgeon, many of his clients didn't see their newfound beauty. Some were beautiful before. It's in the mind. Yeah, it's all in the mind. Speed of trust, Stephen Covey. Mash wash re reacting to lazy TikToks makes me laugh because it's true. Some people don't want to do anything. They don't want to struggle. They don't want to like, you know, again, there was this uh, Guy said he raised four kids and he put them in gymnastics, very young. So by the time they were seven, they could do any sport, right? Uh, and they didn't really have energy. They had their core, they're flexible. And he's like, well, what we did is we put all four kids in the same sport. And people were like, why did you do that? Like, what if the other kid wants to do something different? He's like, it's a strain on the family. If we're all going to baseball season and it's a whole thing, the whole family's pushing for one goal, baseball, baseball, and softball for the daughters, baseball, softball, baseball, softball. Now we're in tune and we can be the best that we can be at those sports that just just focus on one. Right. And so a lot of times parents. I mean, you can look at some of these parents and look at some of these people with dogs like the dog looks like the parent. The kid looks like the parent. Everybody, you know, look like little cabbage patch dolls or something. 
you know, and so it, it, it's one of those things where there is this culture breeding like financial freedom is doing nothing. That's not true. You have to plan, execute your vision, or your dream. It's just a dream. It's just a dream, right? Like uh, Anthony O'Neill was saying how he had five two five two nine two five two nine accounts, and he ain't got no kids. And they're like, "Why you got these college accounts?" He's like, "Cause I'm putting the money away for these future kids that are coming." And um, so so true. It really, it's very, it's very sad. That lets me know there's a chance that young men will grow up to be a terrorist society. So often girls are overparented and boys are just unleashed on society. Ooh, y'all, somebody screenshot that. That was a whole word. That's a, ooh, Jesus. That, let me read that again. Mm, I hit my spirit. It hurts. That lets me know that there's a chance that young men will grow up to be a terror to society. So often girls are overparented and boys just unleashed in society. So many times you'll see women um, so uh, like the imposter syndrome. There's so many videos of women talking about imposter syndrome. And what it comes from, I think, is a combination of parents overparenting daughters, not allowing them to have a uh, self-esteem creation. And so they grow up very constricted, very tight. And so they do these studies. Uh, I don't know if y'all remember the Girls Gone Wow. I mean, this uh, I hate to do it, but I don't know if you remember Girls Gone Wow. And what happened is when Girls Gone Wild came out, they were studying like, you know, who are some of these girls? Like they, you know, they, they you know, some of the guys followed up later. They had their name and numbers because some people got paid for that stuff. And come to find out, some of them came from very strict homes. Some came from reckless homes. A lot. Some came from strict homes. And it was like this, like ah, this constriction on the daughters. Are like I'm gonna do this thing that's wild, and you can't stop. And so you have to be careful in the parenting that you're not smothering their personality, smothering who they could be. You're, you're encouraging growth. You're encouraging independent thought. Uh, but for me, I've noticed sometimes with boys, parents are just like, well, he just won't do it. I don't know what to do. Okay, call his dad. And I I literally go in comments all over social media and I usually be like, call his dad. Let him live with his dad. Go move him to a boot camp. Move him to a military structure. Like, oh, why are y'all saying this? Because usually in most societies, boys from 12 to 18, they go live at military but camps they live at uh in a male dominated area they go in hispanic countries they go work at 15 with dad they're done with you they're done with mom they're working with dad right uh even if you go in italian countries italy where people stay home till 28 29 years old the man is still working younger than the daughter and so you have this uh it's very interesting but that's that is a quote of the day it's really terrifying that you'll run across young men who are just aimless and it's scary out here. And that's some of the anger people are feeling is lack of accomplishment, right? The, the young men aren't la failure to launch, right? So they're not doing well. And you don't need college exactly to do well, but you need some type of skill. And you used to have apprenticeship fill that gap. That's why when people fight me about military service, I go, nine times out of 10, your little rotten son needs military service. He needs somebody to tell him, hey, get up today, go work out. Do this. Do this task. And in three years, you're done. You don't want to hear me no more. You can go out in the world and do your own thing. And it's good or bad, you know? So. <laughs> you pray your next kid is a boy. God bless you. Good luck. Thank you so much. <laughs> ooh. Ooh. Y'all y'all preaching today. Ooh. Many parents simply maintain these kids. <laughs> boy, y'all hitting me in the soul today. Many parents simply maintain these kids. They don't invest in them in a manner like Myron Rowland, former NFL player, neurosurgeon, or associate Supreme Court Justice Katana Brown Jackson. Boy, Chief Rocker, that was a good one. Metronome, metronome, that's the word. Thank you so much. Metronome, thank you, Jayway. Meal prep works, yeah, all that stuff. Life calls for work, mess and slack if you want to. You'll have to do twice the work later in life. I'm telling you. Um, fall in love with the demands of productivity. So a big thing is, too, when people are, oh, if I'm 40 or 50, you know, how hard is it? And I'm like, baby, it can't be harder than manual labor at 40 or 50. And no matter how much you try to convince me, you, you're full of energy at 40, 50, 60. There's a 20-year-old that could go out all night long, party at 5 in the morning, get up and go to work the next day. You can't do that. 
So, you know, there's just certain things. <laughs> it's real dumb out here, John. <laughs> it's real dumb out here. And, and and what's 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 sad about it is sometimes you're talking to people and you and they know it. I remember there was an interview with Beyonce and it's always talk about it where they were talking about Barack Obama and Michelle Obama and Beyonce don't talk much. Right. And, and there's no disrespect to her because she's probably better now. She's probably, you know, but at the time, it was years ago now, Barack Obama had been out of office for a minute. Um, she was like, it's so good because they are so smart, you know, and it was like it hurt my heart to hear Beyonce speak like that because I thought in that moment in her eyes. And that's me paraphrasing what I thought. The pinnacle of living is like I'm an entertainer and Jay Z's my man and ha ha. But you really see the pinnacle of a of a productive, wealthy black people. That's what it looks like. Looks like the Chicago folks that are going to live in a big old house in Chicago and you'll never interact with them. And they're in certain circles you'll never touch. And they're smart and they're educated, right? It's like the rims of the nerves thing. It's like the person who thought they were cool in high school. They look up and realize like, oh, that really wasn't cool. There's other levels to this, all right? There you go. Thank you so much. Three-mile walks in the morning is good. You can't let children pick a path. You put a, And this is the thing. This guy said this. He said, parenting is one of those things where it's almost like a toxic relationship because you're encouraging this person to do this thing. Let's say you have this one way you parent, but you got three to four different children. Each child needs a different type of parent. And imagine being a single mom. You can only parent so well in, in the time constraints so well to all four. Even with two parents there, the father and the mother still might not be able to parent each child the way the child desires. So now you got this adult complaining about their childhood when it's like it was one set of parents. They could only do so much. And so you could put a child on a path and let's say they don't like the path. They at least were on a path. They weren't just aimlessly floating. Congratulations. Oh, Lord. Standards are not set for black boys who are raised solely by black mamas. Um, that's part of that. And also the level of. And, and, and I think several people on YouTube have talked about this. Who's re who, who's really checking your mama going to check you? Not when you're a six foot tall, 180 pound boy. No, I can't hear her, but you, she ain't checking you. <laughs> the chat is quite on fire today, and I appreciate it. Uh, yes, you know what? Another one you could do is Octopi. O C T A P L Y dot A I. It will apply for jobs for you. So save you some trouble there. They apply like 100 jobs a week for me. So yeah, yeah, it, it was it was just one of those moments where you just saw in Beyonce eyes like, what is really cool? Cool is investments. Cool is even you see with Jay Z, you see it with um, um, you you see it with Jay Z, you see it with so many different people. Once they really get money, real money, they realize I'm not even making real money. Even Waka Flocka Fam was like, I make crap rap. I have thirty million dollars. I need to understand finance. And again, that's why I did the video the other day. Finance is the the language of the elite if you don't study it. And so many people out here running in circles, chasing jobs, um, and, and myself included at one point when I was working in property management and delivering pizza at night, six months in, my mom's like, what's the goal? What's the number you need to get you where you can let this go? Because that's not normal, and that's not a normal amount of life because there's so much personal life you have to do as far as dating and going in groups and all this other stuff, right? I was literally burning the candle on both ends. I was working two jobs. I'd go out two-stepping every Friday night, tubing down the river every Saturday, Sunday doing all kind of stuff. And then I'd just be exhausted 24-7 for four weeks straight. You know? So, again, you have to have a clarity and a vision of what does your life look like? Wh where are you trying to go? Um, what's the goal here? Diane says she has a teenage boy, and I'm checking him as needed. Baby, you better go ahead and take him over. By his daddy, his uncle, somebody, because... I, there's a, 
a turn that happens. And this, I've seen this all my boy cousins. Our families had group homes with, with nothing but boys in them. And and my nephew now that's 16, that's basically almost six feet tall and drives a truck and has a lawn care service. He basically spends the majority of his time with his grandfather at their businesses. And he already knows. He already knows his path. He knows where he's going. He washes his own clothes. And people be like, he washes his own clothes? And this woman said, after 10 years old, all your children, not just your daughters, should know how to wash their clothes and make food. And so the funniest challenge now is getting him to make food. Because for a while, he was just ordering pizza. We like, stop it. Let me show you how to make this chicken or this burger or all this stuff. And so it's just very interesting, the transition to adulthood and making, just making qualified adults, right? So again, I salute you. It's a challenge, but I would always say like, I, I'm going to have this person in some type of structure if it's just me. Um, and again, God forbid, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if your husband passes away, that happens to people. I'm going to, I'm going to overwhelmingly now be in a church structure and some other structure where I can make sure this young man, you know, gets, you know what I mean? Gets around, you know what I'm saying? Men, that's all I'm saying. She let me know. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, good. Listen, he at some point he might have to go live with his dad. That's just all it is to it. It does happen. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, listen, y'all don't get in that whole silly season about simps and stuff like that. Um, usually when people start using the word simp, they're in an unhealed position in life. And I'm not knocking men who want to use this this word, right? Um, but it is. It is a unhealed position, right? A lot of the stuff you're seeing online, these mothers, these women who are doing these kind of things, very unhealed, unhinged behavior. And again, just like the haters, if someone's building a whole reputation on being a hater and they're going to tear people down, that's an unhealed position. Something in there is off. Like, like the engine check light is on. Let them kind of run that race over there. Right. Because if you stay productive and, and on task, you're not going to you're going to look over at them like, damn, are you all right? And you're going to keep on going about your day. There are several people who I've had in life just to have to let them go. And that unfulfilled, unhinged behavior. And as they look back, oh, oh what are you doing? Not that. Right. So uh, John, John said when his brother got divorced at 36, he didn't know how to wash clothes. Yeah, that's insane to me. That's that already tells you they didn't learn when they were growing up one and two in their relationship in their marriage they weren't really a partner they were just somebody who came home from work because if you really look at a lot of married couples if you go to their house both people are doing something like hey let's get this kitchen cleaned up let's do this and that now you can buy back your time by buying having maid services and all that other stuff but again that all comes from budgeting and planning right so again it's, it's one of these things yeah they should totally learn all that stuff I mean, you're basically training a self-sufficient adult. And the problem with a lot of baby boomers and, and Gen X is they're looking up at these millennials and they're mad because the millennials are a reflection of, I didn't raise you like that. Or did you? <laughs> if they're not a functioning adult, it is, even though people say it's not their responsibility, well, they're an adult. If you did not I have a friend right now who parent, two of their sons, they didn't teach them how to drive a car. Their sons are 27 and 30. They still don't know how to drive a car. And to this day, everybody goes, oh, well, it's because of this or because of that or they, they don't have no drive or they don't want to they don't have the ambition to learn how to drive. And I go, but that was their parents job to teach them how to drive. We're in North Carolina. This ain't Maryland. This ain't New York. This ain't where you can just get around without a car. This is North Carolina. You know what I mean? So now they're getting in cars, hopping around with people. Because what? A parent did not do their job at a position. And now it's led down this road. For people say, oh, well, they're grown now. It's not my problem. Okay, it is your problem because they're going to come back and live with you. There you go. Thank you for it. That's one of the quotes. Beyonce said Obama made her want to be more smarter. And, and, and that's, you really start to get out here and you start to look and realize how unread folks are. You know, just just like just spend your time with an audiobook. Just anything. Like, don't let these topics be so foreign to you that if somebody says something, and again, people are like, oh, there's scammers on the internet. The scam culture comes from people being unread and un 
it's when they say sophisticated investor, people get really offended because you're like, you're calling me stupid. No, sophisticated investor means you've actually immersed yourself in this environment long enough to understand what it means when you have these rates and returns and all this other stuff, right? A credit investor is somebody who's making 200000 on their tax returns multiple years. That's that's a married couple. Uh, that's a person in tech. That's a person who's a doctor or eye doctor or a dentist. That, they made that for a reason, right? And the net worth be a million. Well, that person's sitting here trying to not buy a home, so they'll never qualify for an credit investor because they don't have the vision to see why some steps are necessary. So that's that's that part. A lot of people walk around unhealed, unhealed. It's very it's spreading like mold. It's spreading like dangerous wildfire. Man, you can. <laughs> that's why I said you can learn how to build a whole car on YouTube. Learning how to drive is a teenage passion, right? Well, listen. When I was in Maryland, I, there was a part of Maryland I felt like you could take the bus. Now, when I was in Andrew, Maryland, I'm saying it wrong. And in a rule, a rule, how to rule Rundale, um, you need a car, but you're gonna be in traffic for an hour plus. So, listen, I went to a cooking class. Me and my boo, we went to cooking class. You know, he likes cooking, and so we went to the cooking class. And there was a mother daughter beside us, and they didn't know how to cook, and they were Latino. They were Americanized, but you're sitting here like, you know, like, the mom was like, I, uh, um, the daughter's doing it. She's like, well, I bought it for my mom. And they were like 18 and the mom's a grown ass woman. You know what I mean? So you're like, how are you Latino and don't know how to cook? That's why with these stereotypes, I'll be believing. I'll be like, no, people in America don't be knowing how to cook. They don't know how to cook. They don't know how to do anything. It's scary. Thank you. That's what I meant. This is the scary part. Yes. So, and rule on whatever that place is called. I don't know what I'm trying to say. But look, it's been an hour. Um, I gotta go lay down because <laughs> I haven't feeling it. Um, there's just too much. You know, I really want you to do a self assessment. But again, if you see the video, I'll probably make little snippets via Opus. And put it on the shorts. Uh, again, last thing one more time. Discipline, values, control, and vision. How do you change your life in four months? You literally put together three keystone habits. One for your body. One for your professional life. One for your personal. Right? And in that, you reconnect to your values. By finding out what's important to you. How, what are values? Values are how you approach life. In good times and bad times. Control is having gratitude and the space, the mining the gap in the space of time to really be able to think because thinking is the hardest thing, right? And then lastly is vision. The vision is having this overall vision of what you look like to this world and what you can offer. Craftsman thought, not, not anxiety driven, what I deserve, 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 but what you can offer to the world and to others. So I hope this was helpful for you. I hope this wasn't too woo-woo, but I think y'all think business and hustle culture is all I'm about. And it's not that. I just know from, from life and living in numbers, a lot of people are just short a couple thousand dollars a year. And that couple thousand dollars a year could change their absolute life. An extra two to three grand a, a month gets them extra 30 grand a year in their pocket and changes their life. I'm going to go take some good medicine and lay down. And I want you to have a great day. And you may see me more this week or you may see me next week, just the way it is. So, all right, you guys, this is your girl from the Classy Con blog. You guys have a wonderful day.